David purchases food and clothing, and his preferences are utility equals F times C plus 10F. His income is $10 a day, and the price of food is $1, and the price of clothing is $2. Let's find his optimal consumption bundle, where food is on the x-axis. Now, at the optimal bundle, we know it's going to lie on the budget line. We also know that if we have an interior optimum or an interior solution, the indifference curve is tangent to the budget line at the optimal bundle. Now, if at the tangency the consumer does not buy positive quantities of both goods, we're going to have something called a corner solution. A corner solution means we're going to buy all of one good and none of the other good. So let's start by writing the equation for the budget line. Income equals the price of food times food plus the price of clothing times clothing. Plugging in the numbers that we have for this specific example, income is $10, the price of food is $1, F is the quantity of food that we buy, the price of clothing is $2, and C is the quantity of clothing we buy. Let's find the slope of the indifference curve and the slope of the budget line. We're going to go ahead and set them equal. This is us doing the tangency condition. So. The slope of the indifference curve is the negative of the marginal rate of substitution. So it'll be the negative of the marginal utility of food divided by the marginal utility of clothing. So if my functional form is F times C plus 10F, then the marginal utility of F is the partial derivative of utility with respect to F or C plus 10. The marginal utility of clothing is the partial derivative of utility with respect to clothing, and in this case that's F. So the slope of the indifference curve is the negative of C plus 10 divided by F. The slope of the budget line is negative price of food divided by price of clothing. We know that the price of food is a dollar and the price of clothing is two dollars. So setting them equal, my left hand side is the negative of C plus 10 over F and the right hand side is negative one half. Those negative signs are going to cancel. I can do a little cross multiplying and get 2C plus 20 equals F. So now I've got two equations and two unknowns. I can use them to solve for my optimal bundle. The left equation is my budget line and the right equation is the one we just found from our tangency condition. Substituting in, I get 10 equals 2C plus 20 plus 2C, 10 equals 4C plus 20, negative 10 equals 4C, and negative 2.5 equals C. So the optimal amount of clothing David would buy is a negative amount. Well, this doesn't make any sense. You can't buy negative clothing. Now, since he'd optimally want that negative amount of clothing, we know we have a corner solution. We're going to spend all of our income on food and none of it on clothing. So, if I spend all my money on food, how much can we afford? Well, it'll be our income divided by the price of food. So, in this case, that's $10 divided by $1, or 10 units of food. So, the optimal bundle here is 10 units of food and no units of clothing. That's what makes it a corner solution when we buy none of one of the goods. Now at the optimal bundle we should see that the slope of the indifference curve is greater than the slope of the budget line. The slope of the indifference curve, C plus 10 over F, slope of the budget line, 1 half. Plugging in for C and F, I get 10 over 10 should be greater than 1 over 2, 1 is greater than 1 half. Yes, we do see that the slope of the indifference curve exceeds the slope of the budget line at our corner solution. We should also see that the marginal utility per dollar spent on food exceeds the marginal utility per dollar spent on clothing. So, plugging in my expressions, C plus 10 over 1, F over 2, then plugging in for C and F, 0 plus 10 over 1, 10 over 2, 10 exceeds 5. So yes, this consumer would like to buy more food and less clothing to be optimal. They can't because they've exhausted their income.